Well, hello. We are starting on how to draw faces. I'm very excited that you've gotten this far, and I hope that you have gone through each of the modules step by step. So, but I hope that you are being able to use what you've learned in the last module as you approach the new one. The title here says Understanding the Head, but it's really about understanding the shape of the head and the human features. Drawing faces can be a lot of fun, but it's also challenging because there's so many different planes in the face. And when I'm referring to planes, I'm referring like facets on a diamond. So you're going to be drawing generic faces to start with. And I'm going to be giving you handouts for your reference, so don't worry about taking notes. And I want to let you know that because we're so familiar with what human features are and where they're placed and what they look like. Drawing faces requires practice. 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 In order to draw realistic faces, you need to understand the planes of the face. And the, when I say planes, I'm referring to, let me give you an example, like the facets of a diamond. They all t turn in different directions. We've all seen a human skull, so we know that the head is round. We know that the eyes are inset into those sockets. We know that the forehead is slanted slightly backwards. And whether you realize it or not, your nose actually has a top and at least two sides to it. So when you're drawing, it's very important for you to understand how those things work in relation to one another. So what I want you to do is this. Put your finger in about the middle of your eyebrow, and then I want you to follow that along the outside of your eye socket and down onto your cheek. Do you feel how that goes in and out? That's going to help you when you're going to start shading your faces. Next, I want you to put your finger between your eyebrows at the top of your nose, and I want you to follow your nose down and feel how that goes outward the bottom of the nose comes back in, you go down to your lips, and your lips are not flat. That bottom lip comes out a little bit and then goes back in. I'm sorry, that was the top lip. And the bottom lip starts closer to the inside and comes out. You have a little dent there for beneath your lips before the chin starts. So there's a lot of angles and curvatures that will help you understand where to do your shading again when you start drawing on a real face. To further emphasize those planes of the face and knowing how to shade them, I, am, I found this graphic which I thought was really impressive because it shows you the light areas, the medium value areas, and the darker value areas. So that when you actually go into drawing a face, a real face, not just this blocky looking thing, you actually know where you should be shading to get the contours and to have your drawing look more realistic. Now we are ready to get into the placement of the features on the face. There are definite guidelines for the placement of each of the elements on the face. If you look at the first graphic there, it shows you that the head is essentially an egg shape. Rounder at the top, smaller at the bottom. In number two, you will see that the face is divided vertically and horizontally in half. The reason for that is it helps you to place the, the facial features in the correct spot. As you can see in graphic number three, the eyes line up with the center horizontal line. And the eyes are equidistant from each other and from the side of the face. As you will see in my video, what I do is I make tick marks across that center line that are equally distant from each other. So that from the corner of the left eye to the edge of the face is the same distance between the two eyes and the same distance from the right eye to the corner of the face. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to laugh. It sounds kind of confusing, but you will see what I mean when you watch the upcoming video. On to the bottom of the face. You will notice that blue line is halfway between the eyes and the chin, and the mouth is halfway between the nose and the chin. 
This helps you to get a general placement of these features. As it says here, when you're drawing from a reference, these guidelines are going to have to be tweaked because not everyone looks exactly like this, which makes the world ever so interesting. Just like everyone's face is different, so is everyone's hair. They give you a guideline here for the hair placement, but you really need to pay attention to who it is you're drawing when you're working from a reference. Last but not least, the ears. You will notice that the top of the ear lines up with the eyes and the bottom of the ear lines up with the bottom of the nose. When you put all this together into a drawing, you get a very reasonable facsimile of a human person. And in the first video, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to walk you step by step into drawing exactly what we've just gone through here. I find it ever so helpful to start with some marks that tells me where my head is going to be placed. I want my head to be wider at the top and narrower at the bottom for the chin. Putting those marks in really gives me a feeling for the shape of what my head's going to be. We're going to start at the top half of the face. We're going to divide our egg shape into halves, both vertically and horizontally. Mark the middle points on both the left and the right halves. Remember that the eyes sit on that horizontal line, and I'll show you in the video how I set that up to make sure that they're placed correctly. Okay, what happens if the face is turned in a different direction? Well then, those center lines pretty much hold true, but the where they are placed on the face changes. We're going to stick with just a simple straight on face view, but I definitely would encourage you after you get comfortable with that to try drawing the faces that you see here that are facing in different directions. Here's how I approach drawing the eyes. I'm going to make four marks on that horizontal line and I want them to be equally distant apart so that the distance between the two eyes is the same distance as the width of each eye. I just gave myself two reference points for both the bottom of the nose and the middle of the mouth. It's very important to understand the shape of the eye. It's not a circle. The opening for the eye is really an oval, and the top lid is a little bit wider than the bottom lid, which allows you to open and close your eyes. Typically, you won't see the whole of your iris, because if you, if you are, it's more or less a surprised, and, uh, a surprised expression. So you typically, when I draw this, I will cut off the top and the bottom of the eye, because the eye is set behind the upper and lower lid. I want to make sure at this point that the eyes are the same height and the same width. If they're not, you need to stop and fix them before you go on. If you continue drawing, your face is going to look kind of wonky and you're not going to like that. When you draw that dark pupil in the middle of your iris, I think I've got those terms right, you want to make sure that they're the, in the same place on both eyes, because if you don't do that, it's going to look like your person's looking in two different directions at once, which again is going to look kind of odd. This graphic gives us a little more of a refined division of the space in both the lower half and the upper half. You can choose to follow this or whatever works for you. I'm going to be moving on to showing you how to add those other features. Your eyebrows are above your eyes. Don't put them too close because they're really not that close. You need room for that upper eyelid. When you are drawing your nose, if you take your finger again and put it in the corner of your eye on the bridge of your nose and follow that down, you're going to feel that curve at the bottom of the nose.
Referring back to this graphic, you will notice that the outside of the mouth lines up with the middle of the eyes. I also want you to know that the outside of the nose typically lines up with the corner of the eyes. So if you draw a line straight down from the corner, that's how wide your nose should be. And as you can see here, I have made my mouth too small. I've lined it up with the inner corners of the eye and not the center of the eye. So the mouth is going to be a little more uh, of a pursed look. Remember when I said everybody has different features? So I'm taking a few liberties here. The ears are typically lined up with the bottom of the nose and the center line of the eyes. They can be bigger or smaller, just like any other features. So I'm putting them in there just because I want to have something there when I put my hair in. I'm going to show you how to do hair behind the ear and hair over the ear. The thing with hair is the lines need to follow the contour of what the hair is doing. If somebody has really curly hair, you would be doing it in little spiral squibbly marks as opposed to this person who has straighter hair. When adding a neck, a good place to start is to line it up with the outside edge of the eyes. At this point, I am continually looking at everything on the face to make sure that I have things where I want them placed. I'm adding more lines, a little bit more shading, just to, you know, round out the head and make it look a little bit more real. Referring back to this graphic, I am going to start shading my face, following the planes that we talked about before. This can take some time for you to do and is kind of a delicate process, so don't get frustrated. You will notice that I'm going to be doing a lot of erasing and fixing and erasing and fixing. So it's not just a one time out of the shot, boom, you're done. So if that happens to you, not to worry, it's perfectly normal. I'm starting with some shading around the eyes to kind of set them back. I'm also adding that shading on either side of the face. Remember the planes, the cheeks come forward and the side of the face goes back. So you can see that I will start to form those lighter cheeks as I am shading. The neck sets back further than the chin, so I am shading that to show that it is further back. Makes it look so realistic, doesn't it? I think it's kind of cool. I often check back with my reference pieces to make sure that I am getting my shading in the right spot. So I would suggest that you have these handouts with you as you're starting to draw on your face. It helps a lot, really. Back to beefing up my shading. I want the face to stand out from the hair, so I'm making the hair darker around the face, which makes the face lighter and makes it come forward in the picture plane. When you're adding lines for the hair, there are some dark shadows, so don't make it all the same value. Get, your some, get yourself some lights and darks in there, and make sure that you are adding a little bit of shading on the forehead underneath the hair. I really like using my blending stump for adding soft shading in various areas on my face. Especially when I start erasing like this, I need to go back and blend any hard edges I might have. And you see me again, I'm fussing with that nose. I have found that with the nose, the less you do, the better. It's still not right, so I'm going to continue to play around with that. I'm always drawing things in, fixing them up, taking it out, putting it back. So if that's what happens to you, don't worry about it. As I said before, it's perfectly natural. I don't like that outline of the nose, so I'm going to take that out and see if I can't do something a little more natural looking. I'm going to just erase and shade and erase and shade until I get it to look a little more natural and realistic. Using your shading to define the edges of Facial features is the way to go because they really aren't lines, they're soft edges. And soft edges recede, hard edges come forward. You'll notice how I'm darkening around her eyes so her eyes are popping.
I hope you're seeing that this is a process where you are continually editing what you're doing. This graphic is a computer generated, so it's got a lot of outline on it. But what I want you to pay attention to is where those shades are in the corner of the eyes, on the sides of the face, underneath the nose, underneath the mouth. All of that is so important when you're looking to draw a realistic face. As I'm approaching the final stages, I like to check my alignment again. Continually looking at those where areas where I should be shading, redefining them, emphasizing them a little more, sometimes even making them lighter, darker. Tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. As I'm doing my final edits and really looking at the whole picture, I see there's a few areas I need to fix. The top lid on the right eye looks a little bit too dark and the eyes don't look like they're the same size. The shadows I'm adding are not too bad, but I need to refine them a little more. Mm -hmm. 